Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Well, I feel like I've done way too many videos this year hiding by my vehicle. Uh, we are out here in, I guess you could say, kind of north central Utah at the Dugway Geode Beds. Now, it's extremely windy. Uh, we just had some rain come through, just had a dust storm, and uh, it's kind of rough out here, to be totally honest. It's not, it's not, the, not the best conditions, uh, but we're going to be walking around. I'm going to show you what the Dugway Geode Beds looks like, show you some of the material, and uh, we're going to be spending the night out here. I'm not sure exactly where, uh, probably not at the beds, and you'll probably see, see why, but there is an impressive, impressive amount of material and uh, it's an interesting site, so we're gonna we'll talk about that and walk around. So behind me back here, you can see the, the actual dig spot. Now you're probably looking at that, and I I would assume that some of you are looking at it and thinking, "Wow, that's a really destroyed place." Well, all of the giant pits that I'm about to show you are actually turned over by the Bureau of Land Management. They come out with backhoes, flip the material, so that you can come out and find geodes. There's some amazing surface finds, but if you want to find full solid geodes, similarly to what you find in, um, well, how to say this, the geological conditions that produced these are very similar to the geological conditions that produced places like uh, uh, the Little Natchez and other Thunder Egg locations. These geodes here, it will have some druzy in them. They'll have a, some light crystallization, a lot of chalcedony, um, some of which will be phosphorescent UV reactive material. And uh, the surface finds are amazing. But if you want to get the big stuff, you got to find a clay layer. It's going to be under some shells. You'll find a layer of seashells. This used to be uh, uh, Lake Bonneville. So uh, you get below that and you'll see this clay. That's where you're going to find your thunder eggs and your geodes. Some are going to be good, some aren't. I'll show you what we already have. There might be some voiceover. Bear with the wind noise, please. Look at that. That is quite pretty. These are just surface finds. That one kind of has like the, the tubes going on. I thought this one that Sarah found was pretty good. It's got that kind of a uh, almost deep maroon to it with some betroidal. And it looks like a little druzy pocket. Let's uh, walk around. Well, you can just see right here ugh, what some of this stuff looks like. Now there's two sites here. This is just kind of one. You can see these like half eggs that, you know, you can kind of pass on, try to go for some more pure stuff. Back there, there's some bigger specimens as well that I just saw sitting out. So we'll uh, work on getting some of that as well. But really, it's very cool material just pretty much everywhere. Look at that one. That's kind of interesting. We got some ominous clouds coming in. Those uh, look like they might be bringing some, uh, some rain, which that's unfortunate. Look at that, right off the ground. It's not a full one, but I don't know if I have, have it in me to uh, do some really intense uh, digging in clay. Look at that. 
I mean, I'll, I'll accept that. I think that's beautiful. Now, some of this material, uh, from my experience, is going to be uh, UV reactive, which that's cool too. Something to check in the material later on. Yeah, that one's very pretty. Look at that. It's partial, but I could just maybe cut the face of that off and have it look really good. So this almost looks like a, a river cobble, but then you can just see that big chunk of agate in there. Very tempted to take that and see if it goes all the way through or not. That'd fit so nicely in the saw. Hmm. Might have to walk that one back. So here's what I'm going to do, because I think this material is really cool. And a lot of it is just, it's so abundant. And, uh, well, I'm going to give one of the pieces away. The next good piece I find, I'm going to give it away. Drop a comment down below. Live in America and uh, the subsequent Saturday night special. I'll pick a winner. Let's turn around, look at the ground, and find a good giveaway rock. So this area in here seems promising for something to give away. I don't know. Pick one more here. How about, let's see what's this. No, that one's pretty fractured up. What do you think of this one, Sarah? Giveaway rock? Yeah, that's cool. All right, this is gonna be it. We'll keep this one separate and uh, we'll give this guy away here. Here's the sight from above. couple other people over here digging. Pretty uh, extensive workings thanks to the BLM. So one thing that you can do at Dugway, depending on the time of year, which is kind of cool, is you can find something like this, right? Look at that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I see that you found that, which is amazing. That one's beautiful. There's also an abundance of this, uh, like, banded volcanic glass. It's pretty, but it's all very, very uh, fractured up. So let's look at this one here. Look at that geo. I guess it's more thundering than anything, but and then I guess this must be a counterpart to it back here. That big guy. What do you think, yard rock? You want a yard rock, Sarah? We have yard rocks. We only need one? Can you get rid of the other ones? Wow. That's a pretty decent size egg. Let me pick this up and try to figure out what it weighs. So that's, that's got to be 80 pounds, 85 pounds. That's not bad, but that's also not the biggest agate we're going to find on this trip. Which is probably the biggest one here right now. So that was just one of the beds. Now you might be asking yourself, why, why is Dugway so abundant? Okay, Where, why are the scraps just there? Other than the BLM coming out and making it look like this and helping, we're in the middle of nowhere, right? Uh, there's going to be a listing up on the website. You can go check it out. Up there, I will have a have GPS and maps and all of those things. But we're like 45 miles down gravel roads. Um, 
the Pony Express is out here. <laughs> Pony Express. It was. It was. Yeah, they don't they don't deliver mail by horse yeah. anymore. Um, we're gonna go to the second bed now, and then on after that we will look at some of the other kind of Pony Express stuff. We're gonna find a place to camp in the area. Uh, we gotta find something kind of protected. Forecast said how how strong are the winds tonight? Low teens in the city, way you know. 30 miles away. The city, the military base city. So this is dig site number two. Now, one thing that me and Sarah were talking about a little bit was, uh, is it even worth it to try and dig your own holes or do what the BLM has done? And if you want those complete thunder eggs, it's absolutely worth it. Uh, maybe that doesn't matter to you. Um, it is going to be a massive amount of work digging Hey, look at these little ants. It's going to be a massive amount of work digging in the clay out here. So, something to be aware of. May not want to do it on that 100 degree day. Uh, this is location number two. This is uh, the one that all of the books tell you to go to. Pretty out here. Material seems... Mm, less, less good, I guess, less abundant. I mean, that would make sense since uh, the rock hounding Utah books and the, all of that, they tell you to come here. A lot more uh, river tumble gravels. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this. Looks like a peanut. Yeah, there's certainly a slight difference between the two locations as far as, uh, I don't know. The other stuff seemed to have bigger things, but certainly kind of more busted. This seems to have a lot more uh, small, medium, rocks in general, and in turn, more complete, complete eggs. Just like that, we picked up enough. We're, we're, we, we don't need tons and tons and tons of material. We got about one tote, one seven gallon tote of quality material, stuff that's fractured, some holes. Should be a lot of fun to go through, clean it all up cut it. Next step is, well, we're going to go do a little exploring. Go try to find a place to spend the night. Something that's, uh, well, flat and not too windy. Not really a uh, road for cars coming in here. You could probably do it, but you know, it's a place for uh, trucks and jeeps and uh, people that don't really care about their supers. Thought I would share this real quick. So this is the road going out and this is a wash. Here's the road. So, uh, you know, if it rained a lot, you can imagine what's going to happen here. <laughs> this road's going to be a uh, Missing a big piece. Well, we have a we have a torrential downpour coming down now as we uh, climb out of this basin, but out there is where they tested. What did they? They tested chemical weapons, military testing. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting to think about. And they what they killed a bunch of sheep by accident once. They, they killed a bunch of ranchers' livestock by. Uh, they lost. The, they accidentally mailed anthrax yeah, the out by accident. City of Dugway made a bunch of mistakes. But it's not a real city. It's a military, you can't get in it, a military site. Hmm. Yeah, we are back there. We left uh, just, just in time. Forgive me for not wanting to get out, but here's one of the Pony Express stations. It's kind of neat. Finally stopped raining. 
just in time for more rain to come in. But most importantly, we found a lovely spot to camp. But let's let's look at the view back here because it's pretty pretty good. Quite nice. Just a little piece of BLM. Nice uh big campground. Not a campground. Just like, you know, a big flat spot with some trees, basically. Look at those mountains. Looks like that rain's coming this way. We had a great day at the Dugway Geode Beds. It was a very interesting experience. We got a lot of great material. So let's head back to the shop, look at it cleaned up. Back from Dugway, I have to admit, um, not all of the places that we went to on our trip to Utah are places I plan on returning to. However, Dugway is certainly one of them. Now, we didn't pick up the best material, or the most material, but in the limited amount of time that we were there, I think we did pretty well for ourselves. So I have all of this, which is uh, kind of complete pieces that we plan on cutting. We have an assortment of fractured, broken up material, which is very, very pretty, pretty stuff, with a large variation in what we have. Um, if I was going to do it over again, which I would love to do, I would probably need three days at Dugway and not two thirds of a day. Three days. So if it was me, uh, I would go back there and then spend a day kind of just cruising around, figuring out the lay of the land, poking around, exploring. Um, probably another full day of like hitting the two beds that are already there, like one do one in the morning, do the other one in the evening, and uh, another whole day just to like punch my own fresh hole on the ground and uh, do some digging. But uh, very, um, very cool material, even this kind of stuff that's not complete, you know? Um, and you can imagine the, the size of the geode that this was part of based upon, well, how round it is here, but... Very cool, very cool stuff. Now, we've got a large variation of chalcedony, quartz crystals, um, some different, like, more tube features. This piece I in particular like because we have a number of things going on here. We have quartz crystal growth, we've got the tube, uh, tube agate growth, we've got some fortification around the perimeter. And then uh, what I really like is this piece right here. Uh, it's actually broken and then reformed into it. You can kind of see that right there. It looks like you could just pull it out, but you, you can't. Um, we do have some mystery material. Now, um, this I believe to be filled with Jasper. Okay, so in my testing of it, we have Jasper here, which uh, this was the only piece like that that we found. And uh, I haven't found any photos of that anywhere else. Um, this, okay, so we have a number of things going on here. Um, now, part of what is really nice about living somewhere and exploring your local material is you can get a really good feel for it. You can figure out what exactly you have around you. So it can be quite difficult when you're traveling around and you're just, I don't know. Um, you don't have the experience to be able to determine what some of the material is that you might be finding. Um, <clears throat> this almost looks like a banded calcite um, onyx, depending on where you want to look. Now, when I take it to the microscope, it certainly looks more like a volcanic glass. I don't actually know what these red spots are. Let's look at some microscope photos. Um, you can clearly see the volcanic, um, 
You can clearly see that it is some type of volcanic glass. I have no clue what these little uh, pink, per pink reddish nodules are. Um, if anybody knows, you want to help me out, I would love it. Um, the material has a hardness between three and four, um, and it doesn't match any known samples of anything that I have. Now, one thing that I would like to mm, somewhat maybe lay to rest a little bit, um, if you look at Mindat, you look at some other listings, they will talk about this stuff having uranium embedded in it, therefore producing a UV reaction. Well, let's turn off some lights. We will look at this stuff under the UV and uh, see what we have going on here. And then we'll break out the Geiger counter. So we do have some uh, very distinct green glow here. We're looking at this under the 365 nanometer UV beast light. I in particularly like this one that Sarah found. It's almost too bright if I go directly on it. Uh, very cool material. Um, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of it is UV reactive. Now, one thing I noticed in here, this uh, mystery material that we have, we have a little bit of UV reaction. The pieces in particular that I'm interested in are right there. You can kind of see them. Now, let's uh, bring the lights back up and uh, check it out with the Geiger counter. So currently out here in the shop, we have a background radiation of uh, 19 CPM. CPM is counts per minute. Essentially, it's the number of ionizing events taking place each minute. So we can place that next to that, and uh, it should be uh, should go up to, I think, uh, probably in the 30s um, is probably what we're going to uh, land at there. Um, I do not believe that the, the green glow from this is caused by uranium. Um, if it is, I would love to see some real, really good evidence of that. Um, in my experience, at least, uh, there's a lot of other minerals that should be looked at first um, when trying to identify something simply based upon fluorescence. So... That is something to uh, take into account here. You know, we're going up ever so slightly, not really an amount, in my opinion, worth uh, saying, oh, it's definitely uranium. Um, you can see we're clicking up here, we're going like, you know, 15, 18, like we're still well within the range of what would be considered background radiation, at least for this part of the country, um, you know. If we uh, take it over to some of these other things, other specimens that we have, if they are actually getting their fluorescence from uranium, you would see a much higher peak than that. You can see we drop down actually over there. So that's just my own observation. Um, if you have any information about this material, I am all ears. I would love to hear it and uh, I will pin what I find in the comments down below. So yeah, um, Dugway is a, a must a must visit spot in my opinion, and uh, give yourself some good time. Uh, up on the website, there will be high quality photos of this uh, material along with some maps because a little bit of a confusing area. Should be an excellent listing for you to go check out. And uh, until next time, everybody, uh, I will catch you later. Thank you so much for watching my entire video. If you like the videos, well, you'll probably also like the website, currentlyrockhounding.com. There's all kinds of great listings and articles, and it's growing all the time, uh, along with different photos. Just all, go check it out. Go check out the website. It's free. There's no ads. It's just there for your enjoyment. So uh, as always, thank you so much for coming by the channel, hanging out with me watching. <laughs> Take care, everybody.